Hello children, today we will be discussing the current electricity. Actually current electricity is a huge topic, it is like a big ocean. But in this class division, in this class of 9th, we will be discussing only the basic means in this chapter, basic terms are uh, introduced. So mainly we are going to discuss about what is a cell, what are the types of cell, then we will discuss the some symbols which are going to be used in a electric circuits. Then we will discuss what is the electric current, what is the potential. Finally, we will be discussing about the resistance. Now, let us start. Electricity. So, children, it is a one of the important branches of the physics where we will be discussing about the charges and their impacts. And it is of two types here. So, here we have static electricity and static electricity and current electricity. This is very, very important. And once again, let us see what actually static electricity and what actually current electricity. Children, static means what? Rest. So, in a static electricity, we will be discussing the charges which are at rest. So, here we will be discussing the charges at rest and their impacts. How they will produce uh, electric fields and their properties will be discussed in static electricity. But whereas current electricity here, so your current itself is what actually it is a motion means in this we will be discussing about the charges in motion. So what happens when charge is in motion, what are the effects, okay na? So those things we will be discussing about in a current electricity. So children, the static electricity we discuss about the charges at rest whereas in the current electricity, we discuss about the charges in motion. Anyhow, our discussion is only about current electricity. That too, only basic concepts you will be learning in this class. In just what are the important topics which you are going to in a higher levels will be introduced in this session. Okay, children, fine. Now, let us see what are the types of current. This is very, very important, children. Electric current is of two types here. So, we have DC currents and AC currents. Let us see first. Let us answer DC currents and we have AC currents. So, first of all, what is a DC current children abbreviation? Which is what? Direct current. AC current means what? Alternating current. Let me write here. It is direct current. It is direct current. Okay, whereas it is alternating current, it is alternating current, fine. So here from where we will get electric, uh, what alternating currents, it is we have AC generators children, AC generators. So you know we will be studying now, we, will, we might be knowing that uh, electricity is produced in a thermal power stations, hydroelectric power stations and a nuclear reactor, yes, whatever we get is a AC generators, okay, fine. And here AC current, the symbol of AC current is very, very important as AC is an alternating current, alternates in the form of sinusoidal wave actually. First of all, what is AC current, what is a DC current children? Here, let us discuss about AC, then we will move to DC because our discussion is only about DC only, but not that much about AC. So, it is called alternating current. For this source are AC generators, okay, fine. And here the very important thing is the alternating means the word itself will give the meaning actually, which means what? The magnitude and direction will be changing continuously. This is a very, very important here. So, here magnitude of current and as well as direction, as well as direction will be changed, will be changed as sinusoidal wave as sinusoidal that is what the children this we will represent with AC current like this AC current because which means what here it will be changing alternatively polarity will be changing continuously of course in detail you will be studying in higher levels okay fine now come to the DC current it is a direct current it is a direct current means what here magnitude very important and direction magnitude and direction is same is same it won't change 
till the end till and what are the source of dc current source of dc current are cells so cell is a device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy and what is the symbol children so the symbol is given by two straight lines in which one is a long another one is a short so minus and a plus so this is a symbol of cell so children in a shortcut these are the types of electric currents now we'll be discussing about in detail what is a cell i mean what are the types of cells so we'll be talking about the types of cells as we talking about cell, types of cells means what children we are talking about the direct current only okay now fine so we'll discuss about now cell children what is cell ma it is a device which converts very very important which converts chemical energy into electrical energy very 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 important it is a device which will converts chemical energy into electrical energy in examination directly they will ask you the question define the cell define the cell so what is the symbol symbol is like this minus plus plus minus means what will happen which always sends the current from positive terminal to negative terminal only so there won't be any change in the direction of current until it gets discharged children the constant amount of current means the magnitude of the current remains constant that's what as a magnitude is constant direction is always from positive to negative that's what we can call it as actually direct current so what's the source of direct current cell what is cell it is a device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy now we'll see the types of cells children here we have there are two types of cells first one is primary cell it comes under primary cell whereas <coughs> next one is secondary cells secondary cell secondary cell so the very 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 important thing what are primary cells children actually uh, these primary cells will work as a result of irreversible reactions so this you might have learned in a chemistry what are irreversible reactions means one it is taken place can't be reversed it can't be reversed means if you can purchase a primary cell if you can use it after some time what will happen it will get discharged and after that you cannot reuse it again you cannot reuse it means you have to use it and you have to throw it that's what these primary cells it also is also uh, called as use and throw cells it also called use and throw cells and these primary cells will work as a result of irreversible reactions very very important very very important irreversible chemical reactions and children means once they will get discharged you can't use you can't you just you have to throw it that's it okay fine and example example for a primary cells means what we'll talk examples here we can say voltaic cell we can say is a voltaic cell and even you can say leclanch cell leclanch cell and even can say daniel cell daniel cell means now come to the secondary cells the main difference between primary cells and the secondary cells is a chemical reaction means secondary cells will work as a result of reversible chemical reactions which means what once it will get discharged it can be recharged again it can be reused again after charging here okay fine and here secondary cells is are also called as accumulators accumulators these are also called as accumulators and these will work as a result of a reversible chemical reaction reversible chemical reaction and these are not a use and throw type they can be recharged again means once uh, this second cell is used completely discharged means again you can keep it charged means during the charging what will happen again children electrical energy is converted into chemical energy means that electrical energy is stored in it as a chemical energy again when you are using again chemical energy converted into electrical energy which means what chemical to electrical electrical to chemical that process that reaction is reversed that's what we can say that these are as a result of 
reversible reactions. And here secondary cells, again there are two types here, there are two categories. In the secondary cells, there are two categories. What are, what are those? It's a acid accumulators, acid accumulators and here alkali, al alkali accumulators, alkali accumulators. So here children, so these acid accumulators are used where huge amounts of currents are needed. For example, let us say <coughs> they are used in car batteries, you know, vehicles, vehicle batteries they are used where uh, more amount of uh, huge amounts of currents are required. Whereas come to the alkali uh, accumulators, here example means nickel iron accumulators nickel iron accumulators so these are used in certain uh, types of uh, what we can say toys where uh, only a uh, uh, low amount of currents are required okay sure so this is about a cell what is cell here cell is a device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy it is its symbol and there are two types of cells primary cell and a secondary cell just copy it so symbols used in circuit diagrams Children, uh, whenever we are making a, you know, a circuit, we do not draw the diagram of the actual devices, rather we will be using the symbols. So now we discuss what are the main important, of course, we will be having a, so many components children. Whenever you talk about a electric current, you know, so many components will be there, but the main main things which we will be discussing. Okay. So first one children is the source of current. So how can we represent the source of current in the circuit <coughs> children here source of current means again we will get doubt is it dc or ac so let us see for both actually so how can we represent the dc uh, source of current and where is how can we represent the ac source of current so first let us see the dc means under dc means what we will get children it's only as as we discussed just it's a cell so how can we represent the cell children if you can see the cell cell can be represented with the two lines one is a long another one is short. So longer one represent positive terminal whereas shorter one will represent negative terminal means it is at a higher potential it is at a lower potential fine. Next battery so many times we will be talking about a battery children battery is what it is nothing but the combination of cells either they are connected either they are connected to parallel or series actually but mostly we will go for series only mostly it is a grouping so reason is that actually so as a result as a result what will happen huge current we will get so that is what here all cells are connected back to back in series they are connected so this group of cells is a positive and finally it is a negative so this is what actually battery and it is its symbol next come to the AC current especially. So children this comes under actually DC. Now AC current. So as we discussed that AC current is not a you know it is a, a constant in a magnitude and a direction. So it will be changing as it will be changing you know it is represented with the sinusoidal uh, wave. So this will be like this. So it will be changing. It is a symbol of AC current. So whenever we want to use uh, like in a circuit diagrams either AC or DC current. So, we will go for these only symbols. Okay, fine, fine. Second one is key. It is a key. So, children, what is the purpose of key in the circuit? You know, it is uh, it can on the circuit or off the circuit. It can make the circuit, it can break the circuit. It can close the circuit, it can keep open the circuit. Okay, now fine. So, it is like on off. Simply we can say it is on off actually. So, here if you can see children. So, this is plug key. This is plug key. It is plug key. And here is switch. It is switch. Here also we have types. Switch. Okay. Again here we have tap it is called actually tap key so now this three are in off mode this three are in off mode so how they will be in on mode actually on mode so this will be on mode means here dot then you can understand that yes this plug key is in on okay now and here is yes 
so it is on means how can we say that so here it is on means yes it is connected like this it is connected so it is in on mode and here this tap key is in on mode means we can represent sorry it is an on mode cup so it is connected it is connected so these all are off modes of the switch these all are off on mode of the key sorry it is on mode of the key so what is a key children it is a device which can use to on and off the electric circuit now look at here the third one is very very important a meter children it is in a device which is used to measure the amount of current which is used to measure the amount of current and its symbol is so in capital a and here is a positive terminal and here is a negative terminal and it is always connected in series with the circuit so that what will happen what is the amount of current which is flowing in the circuit has to flow through the ammeter so that it can measure how much of current is flowing okay fine next fourth one is voltmeter it's a voltmeter so what is a voltmeter it is a device which is used to measure the potential difference across the voltage terminals of the any electric device any electric component which is connected in the circuit and it is always connected in parallel so as to measure the potential difference and here children very very important thing is that here for an ideal ammeter the resistance is what we can the zero whereas for an uh, what we can for a ideal voltmeter the resistance is infinity then what is the resistance all these things yes we will be discussing fine so this is uh, what we can say <coughs> voltmeter fine now fifth one is galvanometer it is galvanometer so children there is some similarity between ammeter and galvanometer both what uh, they are used for electric current only but here ammeter can measure the currents i can say it's a huge magnitudes so galvanometer it is not like uh, to measure the current rather which can be used to detect is the presence of electric current even it's very very as it's very sensitive it can detect even small amounts of currents which cannot be detected by the ammeter and even not only that even with the help of galvanometer we can find the direction of current in the circuit how the current is flowing in a circuit so that presence of current and even the direction of current also taken by or given by this galvanometer and its symbol is g like this so children for this we don't uh, keep like you know positive terminal and negative terminal actually in a galvanometer what happens you know if it is like this so the indicator will be at this point zero zero something like this if currents are flowing in a particular direction yes it will deflect in a particular direction whereas if currents are flowing in opposite direction yes it gets deflected in a opposite direction so that we will come to know that in which direction the current is flowing okay na so this is about ammeter voltmeter galvanometer now talk about a resistor resistor so its resistor symbol is this is this what actually resistor symbol children in a laboratory what are the standard resistors which we are using they are made up of with manganin so very very standard resistors almost all standard resistors are made up of more, mostly with what is it is a either constantin or manganin is used to measure the what we sorry to make the resistors fine next okay let me take this place here seventh one here is rheostat rio stat so children the symbol of rheostat is like this this is rheostat symbol what is the main purpose of rheostat dear children so it is a variable resistance which means what with the help of this we can vary the resistance but thing is that you know it is it's not a constant okay we will be changing but we are not sure how much resistance are we changing okay na so as we can change the our resistance continuously due to which the amount of electric current which is flowing in the circuit also can be controlled okay na fine now next one resistance box resistance box so children here 
resistance box i can show you on the screen you can see here resistance box so with the help of resistance box also we can change the resistance then rheostat also can be used to change the resistance with which we can control the current only but what makes the difference here we will know the standard means how much resistance are we offering either 2 ohm 5 ohm 10 ohm 20 ohm so here we will know the perfect values but here we don't know the perfect values okay children fine so these are the few important symbols which we are going to use in circuit diagrams okay for copy it now we will see what is a simple electric circuit okay na? and how uh, we will see one circuit where these uh, electric components are connected okay na? fine a simple electric circuit so children here is so it's a consumer is a cell it is switch and it is so simple electric circuit so simple i mean what in which only one uh, source of what you can say uh, source of current will be there and a consumer connected with the connecting wires but in children in this case do you think that the let us say it is a bulb do you think that the bulb will be glowing children no bulb is not glowing why because here key is off mode it is in off mode so this we can call it as a open circuit this we can call it as a open circuit so in exam they may ask you to draw the open circuit and close the circuit so then how close circuit will be there yes so this will be the close circuit so positive negative so positive negative yes fine so it is now then what will happen current start flowing through it so that it will be glowing it will be glowing so now it is closed circuit this is called closed circuit it is called actually closed it's simple circuit means in which only what we can say a one source of electric current and a source of energy and one consumer will be there which are connected with what we can say connecting wires as children then how the connecting wires are made so these are made means mostly we use either copper or aluminum so why are we preferring either aluminum or mostly copper only there are two reasons children because here you know copper is a best conductor of electricity so not only that it has low resistance and mostly it has high melting point means it can carry the more amounts of current as it is a conductor because of low resistance and its melting point also very very high that is the reason why are you preferring copper as a connecting wires now children let us see the uh, circuit where more than two uh, more than two more than three electric components are connected and how they are connected let us see here so let us see here let us take uh, for example here is let us say here is a battery it is battery so that is a positive negative terminal and here we'll use a plug key and don't forget that a dot is not there means what it is in off mode only that we have to understand okay and here is children by seeing this don't get confused now it is not a resistance i'm going to make it as a rear start how yes here i will provide this with which you can understand that it is a variable so resistance is varied here okay fine and here is ammeter children ammeter always must be connected in series series in this means blindly remember that that must be connected in the path in the main path will be there. in that main path it must be connected okay fine and here is a resistor means children again telling you resistor means what actually we can say it's a load what is a load any electric uh, what appliance it might be bulb it might be fan it might be tv anything children which is connected in the circuit so as to uh, utilize the electrical energy provided by the cell is called actually load okay now so it might be resistor also it might be resist you can say it as a resistor or load also you can say that okay fine and always remember that here across this voltmeter is connected like this across this voltmeter is connected okay fine then 
circuit is completed. Circuit. Now we cannot say it is a simple electric circuit. It is not a simple electric circuit. So it is a circuit where almost maximum number of maximum number of electrical or we can say uh, 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 components are connected. Electrical components are connected. Children, the two things are very very important. What is that? First, it is in off mode. The moment when you put here dot, now it is in on mode. So current will be flowing like this. This is how current will be flowing. Okay, now fine. What is this? It is an ammeter used to measure the electric current, which is always connected in the series. What is this here? It is a voltmeter, which is always connected parallel as a branch parallel, which is used to measure the potential difference. And here is rheostat with which we can change the amount of current in the circuit. And here is a battery that is what source of electrical energy. And here is a plug key, it is a plug key. So, which is used to on or off the circuit. Okay, children. So, this is about symbols used in a circuit diagrams. Now, dear children, the terms related in a electric current we will discuss. There we will be discussing about what is electric current, what is potential difference, what is the resistance and how they all are related. These are the things which we are going to discuss. Okay. Now, we will discuss what actually electric current. But mostly, dear children, we will be using the term simply current only. So, whenever uh, we get a term called current, you should think that it is a electric current only. Children, actually the current itself is a motion. Current is not actually exactly uh, what we are thinking electric current. So, current which is something is in motion, something which is in flow. But whereas here what is that something flowing means charge. So, here the charges which are in motion constitute electric current means if more charge is flowing in a given time then there will be a more electric current if less charges are flowing in a circuit there will be a less amount of current which means what at what rate the charges are flowing through the conductor is a very 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 important here we should understand one very important thing what is a conductor what is a insulator children so very very important children conductors are the materials with more number of free electrons very very important as a result, they can carry the charge. As a result, they will allow the charges to flow through them. Example, copper, aluminium. Whereas, insulators, these are the materials with a very less number of free electrons. Almost, we can say negligible. Almost negligible. As a result, they do not have anything to carry the charges. So that, they do not allow the charges to flow through them. Example means, yes, wood, glass, rubber, plastics paper this all comes under insulators children in examination you know they may ask you to write the differences between conductors and insulators so that's what i said it's a very very important fine now come back to the electric current as i said that the charges which are in motion constitute the electric current for example dear children here is conductor let us say wire through which one electron is flowing whose charge is q in a time t in a time t then Mathematically, electric current I is equal to Q by T. So, this is mathematically how we can represent. And what are the units? And how can we define children here? Rate of flow of charge. It's very, very important. Is rate of flow of rate of flow of charge is called electric current. And it's a units. So, what are, in which units we will measure the electric current. Children here charge Q charge Q is measured in coulombs is measured in coulombs the symbol is capital C whereas time that is T is measured in second second. So then current will become coulomb per second that is current is measured in coulomb per second. But dear children, this coulomb per second only we can call it as a ampere. We can call it ampere. But dear children, whenever you are writing the full name of the unit, don't start with a capital letter. Because when you write with a capital letter, that will become a scientist name, but not a unit name. It's a very, very, very important. Okay, now fine. And the symbol can be capital A. But what is ampere, dear children? How can we define the ampere? Children, if if Q is equal to 1 coulomb, time is equal to 1 second. Then what will happen to children here? 
I will become 1 ampere. Which means what here? If a charge of 1 coulomb is flowing through the area of cross section of the conductor in a 1 second, then the amount of current in that conductor, in that wire is equal to the 1 ampere. Children, I repeat one second. I repeat one second here. If charge of 1 coulomb passes through this conductor in a 1 second, then the current is equal to the 1 ampere. This is a very, very important. Children, then what actually coulomb means what we should understand. It is a very, very, very important point here. Children, we know that every electron has some charge. Children, try to understand. So, here in some textbooks, children, either they will use Q or can be used E also. So, nothing is wrong. So, children here, the charge of the charge on each electron is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. But whenever we are talking about the magnitude, we do not consider the minus symbol. Okay, na? fine. Again, I am telling you, just this keep in your mind. Now, we will discuss what actually coulomb charge, what actually one coulomb. Children, again, I am telling you, each electron has some charge. But when you can see that the total charge is equivalent to the 1 coulomb is a very, very important. First of all, how to calculate the total charge, eh, children? Look at here. If children, in this conductor, in this conductor, for suppose, in this conductor, there are n number of electrons. Let us say, there are n number of electrons. Each charge is small e. Again, I am telling you, you can take small e or a small q. It is not a matter. Here, n number of electrons charge each small e are moving in a time t moving in a time t then how can we calculate the current here children whenever you want to calculate the current you must calculate the total charge that is net charge you have to calculate here total charge q is equal to number of electrons and the charge of each electron this is how we can calculate the charge then the total current i is equal to q by t that is, this can be written as I is equal to N E by T. This is very, very, very important. I is equal to N E by T. But here the point is that about Coulomb, we are discussing about actually one Coulomb. Is it means how many electrons can constitute, how many electrons can constitute the charge of one Coulomb is very, very important. And when you can say that one ampere current is flowing children, as we discussed, one coulomb charge must flow one coulomb charge must flow in a one second then current will become one ampere which means what here here let us take this formula only here i is equal to n into e by t okay now. so to have one ampere current children one ampere current how many electrons should flow and the charge of each electron is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs it is a minus 19 coulombs do not forget that ok now by time is in second time is in second children this coulomb per second is nothing but what actual ampere try to understand or else this ampere here I can write it as a 1 coulomb per second so coulomb per second coulomb per second is cancel so here n into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 is equal to 1. So, n is equal to 1 by 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19. So, if you can simplify this, you will get it as a 6.25 into 10 to the power of 18 electrons. 10 to the power of 18 electrons. Children, so very, very, very important. So, let us recall once again the definition of ampere. The charge of 1 coulomb should flow. Again, I am telling you. A charge of 1 coulomb should flow in a 1 second so that the current equal to 1 ampere. But coulomb means dear children. We know that each electron has 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. But to flow 1 coulomb charge, to say that 1 coulomb charge is flowing, how many electrons have to flow? These many electrons. 6.25 into 10 power 18 electrons should flow. This is, try to understand here. Means here. If, for example, somebody is saying that, yes, here, one coulomb charge is flowing, then what do you have to imagine? You have to imagine that 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons are going. Just try to understand it, children. Means with that, you can understand how uh, small the magnitude of the charge is. Because 6.25 into 10 to the power 18, so many, 
these when it charges means the charge on each electron is 1.6 to 10 power minus 10 like that how many electrons you have to gather children yes 6.25 to 10 power 80 electrons we have to gather so as to get the a charge of 1 coulomb so that we we can get the charge of 1 coulomb okay fine so this is about electric current and how can we measure the electric current children just we discussed when we are doing about the symbols so we use a ammeter ammeter is a device which is used where i will write yes let us write here so here ammeter is a device which is used the electric current amount of electric current in the circuit and ammeter always must be connected in series it must be connected it must be connected in series and for ideal ammeter it's very very important for ideal ammeter the resistance is zero so that See, it can never be children. You can take any electric component, any electric device you can take. Resistance can never be zero. That's what we are talking about. It's the ideal case. For ideal ammeter, the resistance is zero so that it can measure the maximum current. It can measure the maximum current. Fine. So, this is about electric current. Okay. And always we will be talking about there will be a flow of electric current in the circuit. But how we should know that the direction? Children here, direction is a very, 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 very important. Let us see what is the direction of electric current. What is the direction of electric current? Actually, children, so now uh, we are discussing that electric current is a, as a result of the flow of charges. But previously, it was assumed, it was assumed as a, a flow of the positive charges. Actually, it is not true. So, positive charges, they can never move. So, they are arrested in their particular places, we can call it as a lattice. Okay, now. Whereas, the charges, that is the electrons are flowing and the electric current is just uh, as a result of the flow of the electric, what we can say charges, that is the negative charges, that is the electrons, not because the positive charges. Now, but as it was assumed, as it was assumed, just because of flow of positive charges, let us see that also. So, what we can uh, call it as if positive charges are in flow, what we can call if negative charges are in flow. Again, I am uh, telling you children, there is no moment of positive charges. It was assumption, it was assumed. Okay, fine. Now, for that, to understand that in a better way children, let us take here is, uh, let us take here is one sphere and here is one more sphere children. For sake of our understanding, for sake of our understanding, let us say that here it is a completely with the positive charges, completely with the positive charges. I mean here more number of positive charges are there. Whereas here let us say negative charges are there. So it is a negative charges. And here, here and there, one, two, three, some negative charges. Just see. Here, children, the positive charges are negative, they, they won't be in the uh, same point actually. Its combination is not possible. This is the assumption to understand the concept. Okay, fine. And here is, let us say, the positive charges. Let us say like this. Let us say it is a sphere A and it is sphere, conducting sphere A, conducting sphere B. Now, children, if these two are connected, if these two are connected, children, what will happen? Children here, one very important thing is that here, here, whenever these two are connected, you know, the charges, there will be a uh, transaction, trans, what we can say, there will be a moment of the charges. So, always remember that direction. Anything if it is moving means, always from high to low only they will move. High concentration to low concentration only they will move. It is important. So, if you can see children, this conducting sphere A, in this, the majority carriers are positive charges, minority carriers are the negative charges. Whereas, in this sphere B, the majority charges are negative charges, minority charges are positive charges then what will happen always from more to low only they will flow so here is a positive and here is negative so till that will happen you know then here uh, let let us let me talk here like this so this is how actually positive charges are moving children they don't move just it was assumption again i'm telling you whereas children here from here negative charges are moving is a negative charges are moving so the current as a result of the movement of the positive charges is called conventional current is called conventional current it is called conventional current conventional current 
whereas the current due to the uh, the current as a result of the negative charges that is the electrons is called electronic current it is called electronic current it is called electronic current it is very 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 important so conventional current is due to the positive charges electronic current is due to the negative charges children again i'm telling you as there is no uh, conventional current just it was assumption conventional just it was assumption only and children this is at a positive one it is a negative one so this positive sphere is said to be at a high potential is said to be at a high potential whereas negative one is said to be at a low potential negative terminal is said to be at a low potential now you think children here so conventional current is always from higher potential to lower potential whereas electric current the very very important sir electronic current or electric current anything electron not current electronic current or electric current it is always from lower potential to higher potential only but then when we are talking about the direction of current which one should we take should we take it as a uh, positive terminal to negative terminal that is higher potential to lower potential or should we take it as a lower potential to higher potential this is very very important which convention if you can see mostly all will flow from higher to lower only means talking about higher to lower is a very good for example let us take how does the heat flow heat always flows from higher temperature to lower temperature how does the water flow higher level to lower level how does the air flow higher pressure to lower pressure so conventionally that's what conventionally we also considered or considering even still we are considering current is always from higher potential to lower potential means the direction of current means what we will consider the direction of conventional current only very 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 important direction of conventional current only means what you children the direction of flow of electrons is opposite to the direction of current so direction of current we are not taking on the base of the flow of negative charges we are considering on the base of conventional current so conventional direction of current only we have to take in exam if they will ask you the question what is the direction of current in which direction does the current flow what you should write you should write it as always current always flows from higher potential to lower potential positive terminal to negative terminal now children let us see uh, i will try to give you more idea about this uh, flow of charges that is a uh, electrons actually so children if you can take any simple circuit let me take like this so let us say here is a bulb or something some load and positive charge negative charge and here is switch so now there is no charge there is no flow of charge in the circuit and there is no current the moment when you switch on this yes children this is the direction of current try to understand this is the direction of current so that bulb is glowing this is the direction of current okay no problem what about the direction of electrons is very very important so direction of electrons will be in this direction so electrons will be flowing in this direction it's a very 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 so electrons will be flowing opposite to the direction of the current this is very 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 important just we are considering the direction of current is due to what is a, is of actually conventional only so the conventional direction only we are taking okay so always current flows from higher potential to lower potential positive terminal to negative terminal what about the direction of electrons direction of electrons is always opposite to the direction of current so there will be some confusion little bit what is this current is due to the flow of charges again why are we taking so just this was assumption only dear children so if you can practice definitely you will get it okay fine now here as we got one point here potential so we are always talking about current always flows from higher potential to lower potential higher potential to lower potential and whereas electrons are moving from lower potential to higher potential then what is this potential how can we define it electric potential electric potential or simply we can say potential of students so nothing is wrong so in some textbooks it will be there electric potential in some textbook it will be there simply it's a potential only children now just now we have seen a circuit where electrons are in flow 
so children if you think that there will be current in the circuit then what there will be moment of charges in the circuit as uh, there is a moment of the uh, what we can say charges in the circuit children so very very important do you think that the charges will flow themselves they feel like yes i have to go i have to give some energy to the electric appliance so that it will work it is not that there should be some external uh, thing must be done there should be some what we some work must be done on the charges to flow of course who will take care about that that is actually source of energy children here if you can take a cell do you think that cell will give a current directly no it will make the charges to flow as it is making the charges to flow means what it is doing some work means what if you can take any electric circuit dear children there will be always a work in driving the charges from one point to another point that work done only we can measure in terms of electric potential very very important so to understand this children we are going to consider one test charge test charge so what is a test charge children very very important. what is a test charge children actually charge means what there will be some electric field definitely one charge will show some impact on another charge definitely it might be positive will show on positive negative one positive will show on positive in a repulsive force negative positive one will show on negative is a attractive force there will be some always some impact will be there but dear children we are taking a charge such a charge so that it is experienced it is affected by other charges but it won't affect other charge confused just again let me tell you try to understand so we are taking we are assuming we are imagining such a charge it is affected by other means other charges will show impact on this charge but this charge does not show impact on other charges such a charge is not at all existing just it is assumption only okay na? that is called actually test charge so yeah, that we are taking it as a the test charge is nothing but the unit of positive charge unit of positive charge okay so let us take here it is unit positive charge, that is a q okay so it is somewhere it is placed i want to bring this unit positive charge to a particular place children if you want to move anything ma it's a huge object or a very tiny one can it come by itself no there some work there should be always some work done so that it will be moved that's very very important for suppose children here some electric field is there somewhere here some electric field is there okay now here this is the point where i want to keep this charge okay now and just you uh, think that it is at infinity it is at infinity children is completely assumption because we are going to move a positive charge itself is not right it is just assumption only it just it was assumption okay if there was a charge something like that we are thinking and we are assuming okay now fine why because we already discussed that the direction of current is taken the direction of conventional current so whenever we are talking about the moment of the charges we have to discuss about the moment of the positive charges and don't forget that the moment of the electrons is always opposite to the direction of the current direction okay now fine now children just you think that this charge is placed at infinity now to bring this unit positive charge from infinity to this point there are always some work to be done so i repeat once i repeat once i repeat once so what we want to what we want to move actually unit positive charge where it is placed at infinity what to be done some work must be done that work done only we can call it as a electric potential so children the amount of work done to move unit positive charge from infinity to a point in the electric field is called potential is called potential if q is a charge w is a work done then mathematically potential is defined as work done by charge work done by charge this is very 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 important v is equal to w by q and let us see the units children here so here work is measured in joules charge is measured in coulomb then here potential is measured in joule coulomb or it is also called as volt again children whenever you are writing the volt full name first letter must be small letter only symbol can be capital v now how can we measure the potential by using uh, voltmeter 
ओल्ड मीटर जनरल चिल्ड्रन वी डोंट टॉक मच अबाउट द पोटेंशियल एक्चुअल वील टॉक अबाउट द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस नॉट पोटेंशियल ओके ना फाइन सो दिस इज वॉट एक्चुअली इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल एंड इट्स मैथमेटिकल फॉर्मुला इट्स यूनिट्स नाउ वी डिस्कस वॉट एक्चुअली पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस चिल्ड्रन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एक्चुअल वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस ओनली सो वेन एवर देर इज अ पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस देन ओनली देर विल बी करेंट इट्स नॉट दैट वेन एवर देर इज अ पोटेंशियल देर विल बी करेंट नो पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस मस्ट बी देर ओके ना फाइन नाउ let us see the potential difference what actually potential difference this is very important actually potential difference potential difference for suppose dear children let us say here is some circuit something you match like some circuit and here is some point a here is some point b okay na? at a point a let va be the potential at a point b let v be the potential at a point a some again unit positive charge q is there okay na so and we want to move this unit positive charge from one point to another point means here we are specifying the point from where we are bringing to where we are bringing this is very very important means that initial point final point we are very clear that actually so to move this unit positive charge from one point to another point within the circuit some work must be done some work must be done that work done only we can call it as a potential difference here we are bringing unit positive charge from infinity here we are within the circuit from one point to another point and as we are moving from point a to point b obviously va might be greater because always from higher potential to lower potential only then potential difference is mathematical written as va minus vb is equal to work done by charge again it is same thing but children in the case of potential this will become zero because at infinity potential will be zero that's what we can write only one v is equal to w by k but here we are talking about the potential difference between the two points so we can write it as a va minus vb is equal to w by q again children same story units of potential difference are volt only and how can you measure the potential difference by using voltmeter only actually it's very important defining volt what is volt when you can say that the potential difference between the two points is one volt for example here i just said that we are bringing from one point to another point when you can say that this potential difference between these two points equal to one volt so look at here now we'll discuss what actually volt is what actually volt is first suppose dear children here is a point here one coulomb charge is there one coulomb charge is there let us say this point and is a one more point so to take this unit positive charge like a, to take this charge of one coulomb okay to move this from a to b for suppose some work must be done if that work done is one joule children very 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 much which means what if one joule of work is done to move one coulomb charge charge of one coulomb then potential is equal to the One volt. The potential difference, the potential difference between that two points, children. We cannot talk about the potential difference at a point. Potential difference between that two points is equal to the one volt. I repeat once. When you can say that the potential difference between the two points is equal to the one volt. So if one joule work is done to move one coulomb charge between that two points, one coulomb charge, then the potential difference between these two points let us say va minus vb is equal to the 1 volt okay children fine so this is about actually electric potential this is about a electric potential now the one more term is a very important mostly it is a lost uh, important uh, topic we can say that here it is that is resistance it is what actually resistance resistance chilen resist means what to stop means who is stopping who is stopped is very important okay chill means whenever you know it, you can uh, what we can say make a circuit in which you can take anything it might be even connecting wires also so as we said that copper is the best conductor which will allow the charges yes but still still it will try to stop it will try it means due to its nature okay na definitely there will be restrictions there will be hurdle to the flow of charges through any material 
any material. So what is the resistance? What way we can define? The abstraction given to the flow of charges by the material, by the conductor, by the uh, object, the device, you can take anything. Okay, now that is called actually resistance. So the abstraction given to the flow of charges is called resistance. What is the reason children? So there are two reasons mainly we can say that. Children, whenever charges are flowing through the conductor, there will be some collisions among themselves. Yes, due to which also that conductor has some resistance. And not only that, children, as these electrons are flowing through the uh, conductor, always there will be collisions with positive ions and with the core of the material also. So, because of these reasons, what will happen? Any material, any conductor will offer some resistance. Now, we discuss resistor. What is resistor? A resistor. Children, the device or the material, the specimen or the conductor which offers resistance is called resistor and its symbol is this. This is what actually we use symbol to represent the resistor. And children then on which factors does the resistance depend? This is very very important. So children here resistance, resistance depends, resistance depends on mainly four factors children. The first one is it depends on the nature of the material. It depends on the nature of the material. Nature of the material which means what each children let us take a copper wire let us take a nylon wire do we think that both see why are we not using nylon wire here because it doesn't allow the charges to flow through them rather we can say that nylon thread offers more resistance than copper children it doesn't mean that copper doesn't understand what we can say offer the resistance copper also offers some resistance but when you compare with the nylon thread Copper offers negligible resistance, which means what the resistance offered depends on the material. It varies from what we can say material to material. Okay, fine. And the second one is temperature. It depends on the temperature. So, children, here when we talk about the conductors, especially in the case of conductors, children, in the place of conductors, means sorry, not in the place, in the case of conductors. The very important thing is that resistance is proportional to the temperature. As temperature increases, resistance also increases. But whereas in the case of semiconductors, in the case of semiconductors, resistance is inversely proportional to temperature. Means as we increase the temperature, resistance of that particular material decreases. Okay, fine. And third one, dear children, it is a length of the conductor it is a length of the conductor so practically it has been proved that resistance of any material is proportional to its length means you can take a chillen copper wire a copper wire of 1 meter copper wire of 5 meters both might be same material at the same temperature but a copper with 5 meters will offer more resistance than that of the copper with 1 meter. It means what? Resistance increases with the length. That is what we can say proportional to the length. Okay, fine. The fourth factor is area of cross section. Area of cross section. Area of cross section. So, it has been noticed that resistance, it has been proved that resistance is proportional to the area of cross section, which means what here? more the area of cross section again for the same material and we are talking at the same temperature if more the area of cross section there is a wire with a more diameter will offer less resistance and the wire with a what we say low diameter less diameter will offer more resistance so children these are the four factors which are very very important so let us combine these two what we can say as r is proportional to l and r is inversely proportional to the 1 by a and children here the proportional symbol can be replaced with a constant here means here resistance of course we will assume that okay it is depending on length it is depending on area of cross section it also might be depend the we are taking about a constant means what we are thinking that not only these factors some factor might be there which we don't know 
and that also is going to be actually what we can say depend. So, like that actually we will take concentration. It is not like a simply just let us remove a uh, proportion symbol, let us take a constant raise equal. It is not that. So, we are going to take one constant and we will assume, we will imagine that yes, that is also going to show some impact. If it will not show any impact, we will take as a 1. If it will show impact, we will take its value. Okay, na? fine. So, R is proportional to the L by A. This we can write as a R is equal to rho into L by A. So, this rho is called actually here resistivity, resistivity or it is also called as specific resistance, specific resistance and about this we do not have any discussion children now, specific resistance. So, we do not have a discussion much. If you want, okay, now, so the specific resistance, so it's a, in the simple terms, we can say that resistance depends on these four factors, but specific resistance depends on these two factors only. It depends on the nature of the material temperature. Means you can take a copper wire with 1 meter and one more with 100 meter. If both are at same temperature, then both will have same specific resistance. Both will have same resistivity. So, children, these are the uh, concepts of current electricity. So, in this class, in this standard children, it is like only it is the introduction of the words we can say that. What is electric current? What is the resistance? What is the potential? What are AC currents? What are DC currents and directions? So, how we are going to uh, make a simple circuit and what are the components and their symbols? In the higher classes actually, this is children, again I am telling you electric current is such a huge topic actually. Okay, just it is like a, in this class, it is like a introduction only. Okay, thank you so much. All the very best.